Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. And today I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Intersentia. They're a publishing company based in Cambridge uh, and Antwerp and also in Portland. But they give us a very good service for uh, the publications involving European law and European issues. And I'm delighted to review a whole series of their works. This one is called Private Law and the Internal Market with the subtitle Direct Horizontal Effect of the Treaty Provisions on Free Movement. This is obviously all about the internal market and how it runs and the effect of the um, horizontal <coughs> Uh, policy. Now it's been written by Roll van Luken, <coughs> excuse me, and translated from the Dutch by Lou Punt Haining. And um, I had a look at this book and thought it would be important to review it at this time because of what has happened uh, to uh, the Brexit negotiations as they currently stand. I'm recording this towards the end of 2017 and I've given the title of our book review the following. The law of the European Union at a crossroads with the internal market because that's exactly where we are at the moment as I record this. Let's look at the book. There it is, front cover. It's a hardback, spine and then the back there. Now it's a, a slim book. There's nothing on the inside dust cover at the back and nothing on the front. But what you do have at the back is um, a very short index and then after that, back working backwards, the bibliography which is at the back and then you have the various parts which make up the book. If we go to the front of the book you can see the front page is there and then after that you get uh, the blurb about the book. It's available um, as a, a, a book. I don't think it's available as a, an e-book or anything like that. People seem to be going away from the e-book at the moment. Then there's a preface. Do read that because it sets out the <coughs> scheme. The preface is dated the last day of the year, 31st of December 2016. Then you've got the content section split into various parts as you can see there. Then you've got um, various chapter headings as well. Fairly substantial. Uh, a total number of 10 chapters and then you've got the table of cases uh, listed by the Court of Justice to start with and then the general court then the countries <coughs> so you should find stuff. Very useful list of abbreviations always important in anything to do with European Union law or European matters for, for that instant because I do find it helpful and then you go from the abbreviation straight into the introduction. It's body copy text effectively and you've got footnoting and you've got some numbering but nothing like the big paragraph numbering right at the beginning but you do get into that later on you can see it then splits down but you've still got very substantial footnotes. Remember it's been translated from the Dutch and I think they've done a very good job. Let me tell you a bit about the book and I borrowed some of the information from uh, the actual <coughs> preface itself and the, the blurb, which are quotes from the author. Make no mistake, we need a book like this at this time for the excellent specialist publishers on European matters uh, in Se Intersentia. Uh, and obviously they have a very high <coughs> pedigree and I believe they are extremely helpful to us, as I've said, with our work. It's not just because of the decision uh, regarding Brexit, foolhardy though it may seem to um, many people here in the UK and on the continent but it's also an important book because of the role of the Court of Justice of the European Union, the e uh, CJEU, which has, as I'm recording this, raised its head again about whether Britain will be bound by the CJEU um, and how long after we leave on the 29th of March 2019 at 2300 hours. Now I can tell you at the moment that the plan is that we would still be bound by the CJEU after the period when we leave the uh, common market, the European Union as it now is, um, in 2019, um, but we will be bound during the transition period and thereafter it would then presumably any judgments that they are uh, making will become persuasive and we will no longer be bound. Although I have to say that there could well be a number of, of litigated matters which would still need to uh, be reviewed. And I think 
whilst that is technical, complex and detailed, um, I think it's important to bear that in mind because the overall picture, which most Brexiteers have, it's a piece of cake and we're going to work, walk through it and everything else. It's not like that at all. It's very complicated and there are a lot of, of longer term implications for the, uh, the decision to leave. Now, the author of this book, uh, Roel van Luken, writes that the book was triggered I love that word, uh, because the CJEU, that's the Court of Justice, has interpreted a number of free movement provisions of primary European Union law as having direct influence on private law relationships. Now, that's important in terms of our civil system, and you can see the uh, sense by which we need to have some statement of law as it currently stands. And of particular concern at the present time is how the internal market will function in the next decade as Britain leaves, um, leaves the um, European Union. And much, of course, remains unclear even now because we're all entering new territory. And the author's mission is to seek out the links between the court's rulings on the issues. And he also examines the rulings by analysing them against the background of the various mechanisms used by EU law to influence national private law, all connected, of course, with the, the internal market. Now, <clears throat> he also looks at whether the approach taken by the Court of Justice uh, to one free movement provision can be predictive for other free movement provisions, and if that is the case, to estimate its extent. Again, I think that's quite helpful for all those practitioners within the European uh, union law field. And as the author says, quote, private law and private law relationships in member states of the European Union are increasingly influenced by EU law. And he writes, sometimes this influence is predictable, but he gives examples uh, where EU law provides expressly that uh, violation of a rule shall produce a specific private law effect covered by Article 101 um, little two, uh, subparagraph two of the uh, TFEU. And he goes on to remark, quote, that less predictable are the consequences where the Court of Justice interprets provisions of EU law ostensibly, ostensibly addressed to the member states, such as creating, modifying or extinguishing rights and obligations in legal relationships between individuals. And since 1974, of course, the what was the ECJ, the European Court of Justice, now called the uh, CJEU, the Court of Justice of the European Union, has given interpretations to such direct horizontal effect as some of the TFU uh, provisions on free movement, which we found actually very helpful. Um, as I, I've indicated in many of my reviews, these reviews are here to assist not selling the book or anything, but I'm here to tell you about the book and its contents in case you are involved. And I did for my bar finals um, the European module, so um, it's, a, it's an area close to my heart, as I've seen over the last um, two, nearly three decades, massive change in what, what was originally proposed and what we now have. Now, the book itself sets out to establish the links between the relevant judgments in, I think, very useful detail. The author also discusses the impact which accepting direct horizontal effect has on the grounds that uh, must be available to individuals as a defence to alleged infringement of a free movement provision. And I think, again, this advice given here is very helpful. Let me conclude by saying this most thoughtful work is another title from Intercentia, who are based, as I say, in Cambridge, Antwerp and Portland. And they provide us as EU lawyers with some of the most useful contemporary practitioner and academic commentaries, uh, which make, of course, our professional lives all that more easier to um, handle and when that is certainly when it comes to advising clients and trying to get the picture of where we are we're not political scientists we're lawyers but we still got to get some idea of of what is going on so thank you all very much to to everyone concerned the book was published on the 1st of may 2017 and it's been translated as i've indicated from the original dutch uh, by lou punt Haining. Let's just have one look, last look at the book. There it is. Front cover there. Then you've got the spine. Then there's a little bit of stuff on the back. Not a lot. You can probably make out a bit of it there. Some of it I've incorporated into this review because it won't appear in the journals. So I've got to start from scratch with, 
with the information. Just opening the book in the middle, we're looking at chapter 5, Case Law on Direct Horizontal Effect. <clears throat> this is actually on articles 45, 49 and 56. You can see the structure of the book there. You've got the paragraph numbering, you've got some subheads, and then you've got um, <coughs> the paragraph, the actual footnotes to go with the paragraphing there and so forth. There's a lot of detail in this, and detail is, of course, very important um, to what we're doing because we have to have the overall picture, but we have to have the detail to follow it up. A big thank you to all concerned. Very grateful to have this book and very grateful to everybody who's been involved in uh, producing it. Bye-bye.